So um, I'm pretty sure you know about, but we're going to look at we'll just, you know, conversation, which you guys were having up here. So just continue chattering about whatever you were talking about before. <laughs> What were we uh, talking about? Chicken fingers? We yeah. had chicken fingers and drinking too much coffee. Yeah. <laughs> no, it sorry. wasn't that exciting. No. <laughs> I don't know. Drinking coffee. How much of your careers is due to coffee? <laughs> All uh, of it. <laughs> I just drink so much coffee that I start vibrating and then pictures come out of my hands. <laughs> <sighs> well, um, I'm sure you don't need to know that Kate has a new book out called Step Aside Pops. Mm. Um, <laughs> Uh, the sequel to Harker Vagrant, uh, her web comic, and of course, um, you know how amazing and funny it is. <laughs> um, did, uh, of course, Noel, you did Nimona also a, as a web comic. So uh, I guess I'll just start with like why a web comic, why why on the web, why comics for both of you? <laughs> why life? Even here. <laughs> Well, um, uh, I guess uh, um, my comment's older, so I'll start. Um, <laughs> the internet was, was just there. I think that if, if it wasn't online and, and I had, if, if there was like a, a system still up where you had to submit work and someone had to say yes or no, I just probably would have said to myself, no one's going to read this and I'm not going to do that. Um, but it, since the internet uh, was just any, anybody putting anything up whenever they wanted and however they wanted, um, uh, it was easy. Uh, other people were making comics, people that uh, I got to know through LiveJournal and, and Facebook and stuff, and, um, and it seemed like just like a natural thing to do. Yeah, webcomics actually got me into comics. So, uh, Thank you. <laughs> Would anybody else like anything? <laughs> yeah, like I didn't, I didn't really read a lot of comics when I was a kid, um, and I thought that comics were for boys or whatever. Um, and then web comics was the first place that I really saw female creators and female characters in comics, and like you know the kinds of stories that appealed to me um, as a girl who liked comics. And so I remember going to, I think, uh, Mocha Fest in 2011 when I was a sophomore. I met you there. I was very small. Um, <laughs> and I was very excited. And I was just in this room with all these cool people. And I was like, I like these guys. I want to like, make web comics too. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was already doing like, little sketches and, and doodles and drawings and posting them on Tumblr. Um, and so when I had this story idea that kind of uh, that kind of stuck with me that I really wanted to do, it seemed like the next obvious step was to put it online because I was already doing that. And uh, yeah. Did you, did either of you make attempts to be in print at all at this time? Or, you know, it was straight, you hadn't tried anything, right? Um, I did, but not for com what kind of for comics? For humor writing. Because um, I actually, I had a humor column in my university paper. Um, and that's what, made me a name there more than the comics and before the comics. Um, and then afterwards, I, I missed the audience I had it as uh, at like the, the student university body and, and, um, and that, that was gone because we graduated. And, uh, and so I wrote to a few papers, including my like hometown county paper. And I was like, I can write you a column about what, you know, um, about leaving here and, and, and like uh, living on the other side of the country and stuff. And I sent them some examples and they were like, um, <laughs> This is not what we're looking for. Thank you for trying, but go home. Um, and uh, um, I, I tried a few things like that actually, and I got I got I shut down. But but it was more for the for humor writing than it was for comics. Did, um, you yeah. didn't you didn't study art, right? You were a uh, history. Yeah. Yes. yes. As we see from the black prints up here, and obviously yes. that that carried over into your work. Yeah. Was yeah. that a, but. Uh, you know, what was, did you start doodling? I mean, how did you decide to, to draw these, these, you know? Um, I think that uh, um, that humor column that I wrote, uh, it, was, um, it was a lot of stupid, like, university stuff that was like, who likes to get drunk? We do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and it was kind of crass and bad, and I'm glad that it's not available anywhere. You can't find it, so don't try. But um, I, I, 
I did that for a few years, and as time went on, like sometimes, I remember the, the moment where I was like, I'm gonna try something new, and I made the, the column about um, uh, historical jokes, and and to and then I was like, this is the best work that I've done, and I knew it, and I knew that I had, I had hit on something that I both enjoyed and that um, uh, was was good. So uh, uh, it started in, in university for sure. Yeah, just just because that's what I was reading every day. <laughs> And did you ever have any of those teachers who, who made, um, made those classes really good? I had one very, very funny teacher, and now she, she teaches history at, uh, at the University of Victoria. And uh, she taught Canadian politics. Hilarious, stop. <laughs> <laughs> she always had the class cracking up, and it would be about some like diplomat from the 60s. And I thought that I loved her classes. I, um, uh, and I think that was a big influence, too. Now, um, Noelle, you went, I'm sorry, it's cropped wrong. Um, cover. I'm sure you've all seen this book, though. Um, but you were, you were in art school. I was, yeah. And, did, and so you had been to Small Press Expo, and you're like, I like the scene, man. Uh -huh. And you know, that was it. I'm going to be a cartoonist when I grow up. <laughs> yeah, I think when I look back now, I look at the stuff I was drawing as a kid, and I was already doing comics. I just didn't really know that that's what I was doing. Um, like I had, I had pages like as a like really small kid, uh, I was just learning to write, and I had pages and pages of just like little stick figures like cleaning their houses. <laughs> I I always loved those in cartoons when someone would like tie sponges to their feet and go like skating through the house, <laughs> or when they would like take the cloth and like wipe and it would be like a gleaming clean trail on the like filthy surface, and I just drew that all the time like the same story over and over again about this guy like cleaning various Genius. things his house. Uh, like a radio station, a cannon one time. <laughs> I, I had, and then my other one that I, this one was serialized for years. I don't think I ever actually showed it to anybody. It was about an ant who rode roller coasters. Um, he actually had a, a phobia of roller coasters and was trying to conquer it by riding roller coasters. And the roller coasters would always crash and maim him horribly. <laughs> his legs would go flying off and then he'd get put back together and I guess he'd just get on another roller coaster. <laughs> and even when he didn't, like the roller coasters would find him. <laughs> and it was like this wordless, like it took up like five notebooks. Did just you, of and you poor still, Anne's mm. terrible life. Do you still have those? Probably somewhere. Oh, My parents dear. save everything. Yeah, the, the uh, parent parental yeah, I hoarders. Find those. Yeah. <laughs> now you, I didn't do this to embarrass you, but it's fascinating. So, when you started Nimona, you obviously did it, and then when it came in book form, you redrew it, right? Mm -hmm. How much of it did you have to redraw? How much was like? I mean, what was it like going back? And I mean, you can see you've kept the layouts almost completely. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I. Uh, I, I knew the style changes like three times in the first like 15 pages um, because I was, st I didn't know what I was doing um, and I knew that it was going to change, it was not, that that wasn't the final way it was going to be but I also had figured out, and this is the only reason that it even happened, I had figured out that uh, if I didn't just keep going it was never going to be finished, like I could just keep redrawing and redrawing the first few pages over and over again for the rest of my life and like I would never get anywhere. Um, and so I was just like, I'm just gonna move on and when it's done, then I'll go back. Um, and so I redrew uh, the first couple pages just to kind of keep it in a consistent style so it'd be less jarring for people to, who weren't aware of the webcomic to be able to follow it. And, uh, and yeah, I think I fixed some of the faces that were driving <laughs> me absolutely crazy. Right. Um, but you kept the dialogue. I that did, kind yeah. of interested me. So you felt like like that was right where it needed to be? Yeah, again, I did think about actually um, rewriting some of the first pages. And uh, I thought maybe there should be more buildup to Nimona breaking into his castle. And then I didn't do it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> like, it was kind of cool. I, I still felt that I wanted to see the progression of the webcomic even as a graphic novel. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's it, it does kind of just it, it has that kind of um, in media rest. But obviously, you you know moved on. <laughs> like you became yeah. very accomplished. Um, and and Arb, I, I I guess with both of you, I mean, you know, you both kind of have a medieval 
fascination maybe? Mm -hmm. Is it fun to draw dragons and knights or ladies? I mean, how do you approach <laughs> that? What's the, share some of your tips. <laughs> what, what's so cool about medieval times? Um, for me, I think it's, uh, there's always something surprising there. There's like a lack of information that, um, that doesn't, uh, because of like a, a less written records, less records in general, but then sometimes you find um, uh, pockets of, of stories that, that just seem to defy your expectations of the time and place, um, uh, like uh, uh, what r women's roles were or, or um, uh, how, how peasants who don't have a lot of, you know, uh, record of history like decided to revolt or, or um, um, sort of pop into the story, which is mostly about like kings and stuff when you're, when you're reading about it in, in class. I don't know, and, and it's also like dirty and gross and amazing and there's lots <laughs> of plagues and wars. And, um, but uh, I think it's the, the, the kind of surprises that, that I like. Uh, mine was mostly because I actually, uh, Nimona started its life as a pretty straightforward superhero comic. Um, it was an idea that I'd had in high school about this character named Nightshade at the time, who was a shapeshifter and a sidekick uh, for the villain. And uh, she had an eye patch for some reason. Um, and like I kind of put it away because it didn't really grab me in any way. It wasn't until they were, um, I think we had a character design assignment for one of my classes, and I remembered her. And I was like, well, I'm going to you know, fix her. I'm going to make her like something that I'm interested in. Um, and I think, I think my friend Amy had been draw, like, talking about Joan of Arc a lot lately. So I, when I drew her, I drew her with this medieval look to her. Um, and honestly, it was just kind of a way to like, take it out of that generic superhero look, which only works if the characters have like, I mean, this is not 100% true, but like, it can be a real uh, issue for superhero comics that aren't like 60, 70 years old and don't have that history behind them. I mean, they can just look, people will read them as a parody instead of like as their own thing. So kind of combining the superhero world with uh, like medieval stuff in very, very eclectic ways <laughs> just became like, uh, you know, my way of world building kind of on the fly. <laughs> Were you a fantasy fan? Were you a fan of like those kind of books and you yeah. know, Daring Do? Yeah, I, uh, I read a lot of fantasy books as a kid. Um, I read, this is one of my favorite stories. I, don't, I, I really want to tell it, but it's kind of, I'm worried about getting in trouble. Um, Do I'm gonna it! Tell, I'm going to tell the nice version of it. Um, so I was a very competitive kid. I was homeschooled, um, and I was very goal-oriented. Um, and so when I was 11, I picked up Aragon by Christopher Paolini, and I was like, dragons, this is awesome. And then as I got a little bit older, I was really like snarky, and I was like, and Christopher Paolini was a uh, homeschooler who published it when he was like 17. And so I was like decided that like, I was going to beat him. I was going to write a book, and I was going to finish it before I was like 15. And I was going to publish it. I would win. Um, and I did. I wrote a 600-page book, um, which will probably never be seen. Uh, so I guess he won. But uh, like a couple years went by, and uh, he tweeted about it. Uh, he tweeted about Nimona from, from, his, from his Twitter and then like tweeted like a picture of the book when he got it and was like a self-professed really big fan. And it was just so cool that it had kind of come around <laughs> that way. And I was like, ah, I beat you. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I don't know. Um, okay, who were like, um, you, you did have like uh, cartooning idols though as a, I mean, there were some cartoonists that you looked at that you really were inspired by, right? Um, when I was little? Yeah, uh, or just, you know. I guess so. Well, like, um, there, was, there was no internet, and um, there was no comic stores. Now, what was that like? There I was mean, no libraries. Was <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it meant that the only comics that you ever really saw were in the newspaper. Um, and uh, we only got the Sunday Calvin and Hobbes, not the weekday ones. And those are the ones where Calvin is on some crazy, like, adventure in his brain and he's driving a spaceship and I was like, what is this comic about? <laughs> <laughs> I never got like the charming storyline so I was like, I, I, I felt like I didn't really like Calvin Hobbes. And when, when the book orders came in, there, there was a few boys in my class who read it and they were like, 
these comics are for boys. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> what about me? I want to read comics. Um, and they read Mad, and they're like, Mad, it's also for boys. So I got cracked. <laughs> and I was like, this for girls? Um, <laughs> I thought cracked was funny. Um, and uh, <laughs> I liked, um, I liked Foxtrot by, by Bill Emmond. Uh, I liked it when Paige had, had daydreams about uh, the French man. And <laughs> she would be like making out with him and then it would just be her brother putting an iguana on her face. <laughs> um, but mostly, yeah, it was mostly like Archie and, and, uh, and newspaper comics. And um, I didn't know that, that there was a bigger world up there until I went to university um, and I saw the, the, in the coast, in Halifax's Alt Weekly, there was always comics um, by, by indie cartoonists. And, um, and in the, the university library had a small section of graphic novels. And there, so there was like Julie Doucet and, and Chester Brown and stuff. And, uh, and it, it blew my mind. I was like, oh wow, comics can be uh, something completely different than, than what I thought. And, uh, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was just trying to, to make um, stupid jokes in the, in the student paper. But, um, so it was like a crash course, I guess. When I, when I started doing online comics, and, and I didn't know anything about them, um, the nice thing about the comics world is that, uh, I know there's a, there's a lot of flack about how uh, like, you know, comic stores and things can be exclusive clubs, and people can be kind of snarky. But I never, I never really came across that. Um, Really early on, my, my comic was treated, tweeted by Warren Ellis, and I didn't know who that was. And, but I suddenly had a bunch of emails. They were like, Warren Ellis, link to you. Like, you made it. And, <laughs> and I was like, what, who? And I went to the, um, I went to the comic shop, shop in Victoria, and, uh, and, I, and there was a couple of dudes at the front. And I was like, do you guys know who Warren Ellis is? And they're like, some dudes were like, he's only like the most amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then the comic store owner was like, get the fuck out of here. And he's like, you want to read comics? Let's go. And, and he's like, what do you like? I was like, I like history. And so he gave me um, Crazy by Warren Ellis, which was really, really good. And Marvel 1602. <laughs> and that's like a comic that, that is like for... Um, advanced. <laughs> advanced. Like you have to know who they were, who all the X-Men are and what they do. And I didn't know any <laughs> But I read it and I was like, <laughs> I mean, I got it. But like the big reveal, like someone under a cloak, and then he like shoots a ray out of his eyeballs, and you're like, oh, it's obviously Cyclops. And I was like, who's? Why? <laughs> but I always found like there was a lot of help. As soon as I was like, I like comics, and people were like, join the club. Um, and it was easy. That's great. Well, you have also, this came out last year, The Princess really? and the Pony? Yeah, yeah. What, so this was your first kids book, right? Yes. What yeah. was uh, what was like the inspiration for this? For this, um, uh, well, uh, I, I gave Scholastic a few dummies, and uh, a version of this one was one of them, and, and they were like, "Yes, we want this one." And the pony was a natural character. I had uh, I had kids already who who liked the pony. Like at, at Mocha, there was a there's a girl who used to come with their parents and, and bring me drawings of the pony and things like that. And her parents were like, she's not allowed to read any of the other ones, but. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so nice, because uh, when kids like something, they like it better than anything in the world. And when they don't like it, they don't care. They're just like, that's not for me. On to the next thing. And it's so refreshing, because you know we're all in comics, and people are like, I hate this. I hate, I hate this. <laughs> Post blog, hate mail. And you're like, just leave it alone. Go to the next thing. Like a kid, it's so beautiful. It's beautiful to see a kid who doesn't like work. But if they do like it, you know, they, they love it. And, and it's so darling. So um, I, I wanted to make a, a book about princesses because I love princesses. I wanted the cone hat. I always drew myself in a cone hat. High heels that look like um, just two spikes at the bottom of my feet. Um, and, uh, and a dress covered in rainbows. <laughs> And, uh, and so there's a lot of backlash against princess culture lately because that, that shit is marketed so heavily at kids and, uh, and it's kind of gross. But, but children, like, children choose princesses too. They, I, think, I really think that it's a, um, it's a character who's a young person who has the ability to make choices. And when, you know, the, the, if a princess says, I want a parade today, people are like, it's your choice. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. 
uh, you know, so it depends on the story that you, you want to tell. So I just, I wanted it to, to be a story that, that I would have liked as a kid, which meant it had to be a princess. Well, it is, and you can... No uh, back, though. What? I was going to say, you could get some of the pony merchandise, like there's a mug with the pony on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're making the little plush. They're taking so long, but they're so cute. Mm. I'm very excited about these little stuffed ponies. Mm. Now, uh, Noelle, of course, you co-created Lumberjanes. And, uh, I mean, what is there left to say? <laughs> I mean, did you have, I mean, it's, it's now it's just become this, like, you know, standard bearer or whatever. I mean, mm. like when you were going into it, you had interned at Boom, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you knew uh, Shannon, the editor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, were you kicking some ideas around or? Uh, what happened was that uh, I, I was Boom's intern in 2012 and then I went back to school. Uh, and when I graduated, I was like, mm, LA was pretty cool. I guess I'll go back there. Um, and I got back and I had brunch with Shannon like my first couple days back. And uh, Shannon and her friend Grace had been, um, had been like pitching some ideas and cooking some things up. She's like, oh, we have this idea. It's like girls and monsters and summer camp. And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're gonna ask me, but the answer is yes, because <laughs> I want that. Um, and so at first I was just doing character designs uh, and just trying to like, they sent me character descriptions and I like do the characters. And then, because Grace had not written a comic before, they were like, oh, like, do you want to co-write? And uh, just kind of, you know, help her out. And I was like, sure. And it was great. And we did it. And it happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, definitely just kind of capture. I mean, it's like when you guys are talking about both of you saying, like, oh, well, these aren't for girls. Yeah, yeah. That was real. <laughs> Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> now who makes comics? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ronnie. He's great. <laughs> We've talked about that. I was like, remember when you challenged me to draw the Ninja Turtles, and I did, and he's like, <laughs> no. Well you, well, you both have dabbled a little bit. Um, no, you're now you're right now you're big time. You finally made it. Oh my God, you're writing a Marvel comic, right? But writing for Marvel does not mean that you're the big time. I'm, I am being very sarcastic. Okay. Also, I'd like to say that I have checking. I have a lot of younger relatives, and, and because now I'm the older, cool relative with like the the I'm making the comics for a living and stuff. If they're if they have like cousins with kids who are like eight or ten and they like comics, I always bring them stuff. And so there I have there's a couple of girls, and I'm like. Do I have a comic for you? And I give them Lumberjane. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, do you have any more? <laughs> uh, put me in touch, I'll load them up. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Uh, but Kate, you did a little work for Marvel too, right? Yeah, I got to do Strange Tales. It was right. a lot of fun. Right. They were like, just do whatever you want. Yep. Just don't make them, just don't make them do anything like gross like, and illegal. <laughs> no bestiality and we're good. And. Uh, <laughs> So that, that was cool to have like free range to do whatever. Yeah. Now, I mean, are you, uh, with Runaways, uh, have you been constrained at all? I mean, do you have to write Secret Wars stuff or? Yeah, Secret Wars is a weird animal because it's both like at, the, at once, it's like, oh yeah, do whatever you want. And I'm doing all this <laughs> weird stuff. I'm like, okay, uh, well, Cloak and Dagger are gonna be uh, twins and I'm gonna switch their powers. Uh, and is that okay? I was like, okay, that's weird, but yeah, sure, I guess. Um, <laughs> but then it's also like, y y I also have to be aware of what is going on in the rest of Secret Wars to a certain extent, so like, mm. which it was really hard to actually find out what was going on. <laughs> uh, I would call other people I knew who wrote from Marvel, and I'm like, do you know what's going on? And they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, like, I didn't realize that there were multiple versions of each character in every domain. Like, I missed that somehow really early on. So like, <laughs> I had Pixie in mine, and then I saw Pixie on the cover of another one. I was like, should I not be using Pixie? Like, what's going on? Is this a problem? And they're like, oh, there's actually like a billion different versions of every character. And that's when I realized that I had missed the perfect opportunity to make Jubilee make out with herself. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so upset. I was like, why didn't you tell me this from the start? It would have all been different. 
He didn't get the memo. Next time. Next time. Yeah. Is it, um, has it, has it uh, given you any, you know, given rise to any dreams though? I mean, now, you know, Spider-Man or bust, or, you know, do you want to write like Batman, or? I'll write Wonder Woman. <laughs> They're not going to I never asked. Did you, you didn't get asked to do Sensation Comics? What is that? <laughs> it's no. a sensational thing. Oh, <laughs> Wonder Woman. Oh. No. All right, well, oh. note to DC. Kate yeah. Beaton stands ready. Um. <laughs> I, think I would do a Mystique series if they let me. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, All right. They won't let me though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, gosh, that great idea. I'll ask them. I'll be like, "Oh, can I do this character?" And they're like, "No, that character's actually a cyborg right now." I'm like, <laughs> "All right." <laughs> like it's weird. I like I love these characters and I want to write them because it's cool because mm. I like have a connection to them. But at the same time, like Runaways is kind of a testament to what I would do if I had them, which is just act like they're completely different characters. <laughs> so it's like. I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe it's not. I, I don't know, necessarily know if I if that's the, the path because, uh, like you know, Secret Wars is over and now I don't get to like hang out with these like shitty kids anymore and I love them <laughs> and they're kind of like they're like it's still Jubilee and it's still Amadeus Cho and stuff but like they kind of became mine in a way so I'm like I miss them. I wish that I they were just mine and I could do as many comics as I wanted with them and it didn't matter what was going on in like the broader Marvel world. So. Uh, Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Olden I, think days. It, I think it takes a very, very strong person to <laughs> write a lot of main two mm. books. Um, I'm very impressed by people who do. Well, uh, uh, Kate, I know you. Uh, there, there's one place that's more daunting than Marvel Comics. It's probably the New Yorker. Oh yeah. And there's a whole movie about how you have to go in every Tuesday and pitch your right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you have this is from the the you've you've yeah. done some stuff for them. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have to go to this Tuesday process or? No. Um, Bob Bob wrote to me, um, <laughs> and uh, he wrote to me and Julia Wirtz and a few other people, and he, he's uh, they re I, realizing that their their model is kind of archaic, and that was really good to hear because before you had to go in with like 10 finished cartoons every Tuesday or submit them by email and you'd have to do it for a long time to, to show that you were dedicated enough to get rejected all the time. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then they might buy one, but you still had to submit a big pile. Um, and, uh, and there's no guarantees. And uh, it was grueling uh, to, to try and get in. I did, and then I was in it, like a, for, I think I sold like four cartoons. And, and then I was like, I don't have time for this. Um, and, uh, and I stopped in like 2010, but then he wrote asking and, and um, like he's looking out for, for more diversity, which is really nice to see. He's like, I would like to have more women. I would like to have some black cartoonists. We don't like, I would like to, uh, to have better representation here. And I don't want people to think anymore that New Yorker cartoons are these like businessmen and with, with briefcases. And you know, if you, he's like, I'm really trying to, um, to, to, pull this into, into the modern era. Um, and, uh, and so we have to make some changes. And I thought that was a really good, uh, like a healthy thing to realize after so many years. Um, and uh, um, so, I, so I, I agreed. And you know, like if you, the, the, the thing about The New Yorker is that um, anybody can submit, anybody here who is aspiring, um, uh, uh, women and people of color, especially, he's looking for you. <laughs> so you can't, you can, like, you just submit. You, um, uh, uh, and, and you might get in. And it's, it's, it's it kind, is of, kind of amazing that it, that's the rules. It is a little esoteric, though, like what makes it funny. Yeah, well, I don't know. I just, I told him, I was like, I'm just going to make the cartoons I would normally make and send them to you. I'm not going to, like, I want, I want to fit within your, um, I want to fit in the magazine, I don't, but I don't want to, like, change what I do. I don't want to make cartoons for, like, old, rich people <laughs> to, like, guffaw at, almost. <laughs> um, and he's like, that's fine. Um, uh, I think that people have an idea of what a New Yorker cartoon is and they try to submit that. But I talked to Roz Chast once and um, I was on a panel with her and I was talking to her about submitting to the New Yorker and I was like, I tried to do their thing, like their, the way that they do things. So she's like, don't do that, do, do your thing. That's, and she does, she, her cartoons are totally different from anybody else's. 
she's really awesome. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that was her advice. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. The New Yorkers, it was a weird animal. It's the only, <laughs> thing, it's the only thing left of that era yeah. of, of like magazine gag comics. And well, there's, like I said, there's a movie. It's going to be on HBO in December. Right, yeah. yeah it's pretty fascinating, mm-hmm. actually. Um, I want to ask you both about um, your nonfiction autobiographical comics. And Kate, you do... Um, <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> and, um, I mean, you do your family comics yeah. that are, you know, delightful like this, but you don't reprint them at all. <laughs> no. And um, you did um, another comic, this is from one called Ducks, yeah. that was uh, also about your, your time working at, at a mining camp. Um, and Noel, you've done a few, a very few. You're, it's not like, it's just one panel from one that you did. I don't think I've seen any of them. And um, the, the start of another one. Um, but we'll move it, I'm gonna read it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's what, what's, uh, I mean, I, Kate, why don't you re- put them in your books? Um, because uh, uh, I'm from a, such a small place that if it's on the internet and million strangers read it, it doesn't mean anything. But if there's someone has a book and everybody can read the book and they get a copy of it, because a book is a thing that has currency there still, you know, um, they don't, nobody's Twitters. Um, uh, and, and if they can take it to my parents' house <laughs> and be like, there you're in the book. <laughs> um, then it's, it's way out of their comfort zone. Like, and I, I tried it out a bit. I tried it, I put some of the comics on Facebook where all the old people are. And, um, <laughs> and they're just, they're, they're all retired, so they're like Facebook all day. <laughs> and, and, um, so I put, I put a few up and, and a few like, like neighbors and stuff were commenting on them. And it made me super uncomfortable. I was like, no, no, don't, you're not like, I was like, this is private, and it's not. I put it out in front of millions of people. <laughs> but, but, but like for like someone who lives five minutes down the road to see it and comment on it and be like, that's so Neil, or like, oh, ha, ha, and laugh. Yeah. So we're like, I'd be like, leave me down alone. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's so, like, I, I can't. And I, and I know that I, like, it's a, it, they're so generous to let me do this. And I was like, I'd love to make a book and just give you all the money because I don't want any of the money from that, but I would love for you to have a new thing, uh, you know. Uh, and, and Mom was like, oh, maybe when we're dead. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, that's a good solution. I'm like, no, that's, I don't even want to think about that. So I, <laughs> but at the same time, they're my favorite comics to make. Uh, they're, they're, just, they're just about like family and love and, and there's a lot of like comment about like shitting your pants in them, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. What else is family about? I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> Noel, you've d- anyway. you've done a couple. What yeah. what's what's they were pers- they were very personal. Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, oh, I read this one. Yeah. yeah. When well, I started making comics, my sophomore year, uh, it was one of the worst years of my life, um, and I was in a very bad place. Um, and for some reason, I was having a lot of trouble communicating to people why I was having such a bad time. Um, and like, I was like hurting myself, and I was like yelling at people, and I was like, really, I was just not doing well at all. And I, it, there was so much frustration at not being able to even explain what was wrong. Um, and then I discovered comics that year, and that was something. Like, I did this first comic from a comic class. It was just like, talk about what you did over your summer vacation. And I made this very, very self-pitying comic about how I got sick on my birthday. (laughs) And I didn't get to eat my cake. (laughs) And it was like, you know, it was kind of like, if I were just talking about that, it would have sounded like, you know, okay, grow up, you big baby. Like, you're going to have a ton of more birthdays. It's not a big deal. Um, But then, like, I don't know, like, I did it. And everyone was like, oh, you know, I feel bad for you. Uh, It was your birthday and you were sick. I was like, yeah, you should feel bad for me. but it was like for the first time, like people actually understood why I was upset. Like, and I was like, oh man, I like discovered something. Like people understand me when I put pictures and words together, uh, which is comics. And I was really excited about that. Um, so actually, two years after that, I 
just really, I had done a few since then. I did a comic about the first time I walked out of church and like posted it on Easter because it was like, you know, that was really that was, important yeah. to me. Um, and I was so scared, like I was freaking out. I didn't, it was so personal to me. Um, and then like a lot of people came and they were like, oh my God, this like, I understand this, you know. I didn't know if anybody would. Um, and then I made a comic about my sophomore year and why I was upset. And that was several years later because it was still so personal. Um, and I posted it, I just kind of put it out there. Um, and like, yeah, it's like you said, when you put it on the internet, like it's the worst thing about Tumblr is also the reason I feel comfortable, comfortable putting it there. Because as soon as it gets reblogged, it kind of like, it goes away from you. And it just, it, like it goes into the world and it's not about you anymore yeah. in a weird way. Um, and that made me more comfortable doing it. Like it, it actually wasn't pointing back to me that much. Um, and then a weird thing happened when I posted it was that like, you know, because I had been like my best friend who I was really shitty to when I was going through all that stuff. I like, she read it and she emailed me and she was like, we hadn't talked in a few years. And she was like, I understand what was going on now. And I asked my mom at the time if I could, you know, go see a therapist. And she's like, nothing's wrong with you. And then she read the comic and she called me <laughs> and she's like, I'm sorry, now I understand. <laughs> and it was like, I was able to actually tell people what I was feeling. Mm. And even though it like still like, they were still stupid little things, but they can feel really important to you. Um, and other people can also find comfort. Like if I had seen that comic if that someone else had made at the time, I wouldn't have felt so sad and alone, you know? And then the people were writing to me and they're like, I felt this way too, I feel this way now, like my friend feels this way. And like, if I had had those people write to me before, I wouldn't have felt so alone. And it's like, I don't know. Uh, it's something that I think, I, I think it can only really exist online because I don't necessarily want it to be a book. And kind of for the same reason, like I don't want, they're about me, they're not like, I, I don't like telling other people's stories for them. Um, I get very uncomfortable about that, like featuring my parents or my uh, friends in stories where they come off as like unsympathetic or whatever. And I really want to make it clear that it's like they didn't do anything wrong, even if I like they really hurt my feelings in this comic. Like, this is my point of view on it, and mm -hmm. like, it's just about my feelings. And I don't, I try not to condemn or cast other human beings who entered my story to like, like to try and define their narrative. So do you, so you don't think that this is something you're gonna work, do any more of right now, or just a situational, situational comments? Yeah, I mean, I do them when I'm, I still do them actually. Mm -hmm. Even about like, you know, um, I've done a couple about religion, I've done a couple about, you know, my family and about like, figuring things out as I get older. Uh, I did one that was about like, you know, falling in love with somebody who doesn't love you, like stuff like that, you know? They're kind of, I don't know, mm -hmm. I enjoy them. But they're just things that I put out there, and then uh, and then I go my own way. So. Well, this sometimes I think sometimes the most personal things are like the most universal. So sometimes you're like, this is a real piece of my heart and, and soul, yeah. and people are like, I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> and 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 uh, there's something kind of nice about that too, yeah. where you're like, my my biggest problem is someone else's biggest problem, or like my deal. I, I wrote a comic about going back to church when you've already left it. And being in that space that you know, and and a lot of like people who left the Catholic Church or grew up Catholic are just like, oh God, I know exactly this, and it makes you feel like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even though, like, I think I did the comic about like, it's kind of like about having a crush on someone, and you know that like you kind of have a crush on them because they're so lofty and they don't know you exist, and then kind of like getting a little too invested in that, like, because your brain doesn't quite catch on. And so I did a comic about that that was very, like, kind of vague. Uh, and then someone reblogged it. They're like, this is just how I feel about my favorite celebrity. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> so that happens too sometimes. But also, like, that's their experience. And, yeah, like, yeah. You know, that's, that's something that happens. You invite, you invite people the to relate to you. is full of in Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It actually was about Benedict I know. <laughs> I didn't have to guess. Think about him all the time. <laughs> he doesn't even know I exist. <laughs> oh, well, this is a comic that you did about when you went to the comic shop, and you know they were as we were talking about earlier. This isn't for girls, and uh, I am going to open it up to questions in one minute. But I'm going to quickly show something that both you guys do. <laughs> and you know, Kate, you had your strong female characters, and. Uh, 
you know. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Um, I remember that comic that about you Noel know, going in the in the comic shop, and then I I mentioned on Twitter that I've had only like really great things, and then I thought, well, I don't want to. Um, that's true for me, but that doesn't take away from her story. I, I hope that that never uh, came across that way. But no, you were just lucky. You're very lucky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Well. <laughs> yeah, that was one I'm thing. Glad it I, like, I did feel kind of bad because I didn't expect it to like blow up so much. Oh, that's so, and like that's it was so on Facebook, and this guy was like, "I run an awesome shop. It's really clean and bright, and like yeah. you should not be. You're just like scaring people away from wanting to come into comics." I was like, "Geez, I didn't want to do that, but also like you don't sound very nice right now, and like <laughs> I don't think I want to go into comic shop." And like yeah. the truth is, is that like I've had great experiences too. Yeah, but, yeah. Like, a, few drops in the bucket of somebody just being condescending, even yeah. in a very subtle way. Sometimes those add up, and I like I still Especially when you're I young. don't go to comic stores anymore. Like I just don't. I don't know. Like sometimes it's just not worth it. You're like, is today gonna be a good day or a bad day? I don't know if I want to risk it today. I'm just not in the mood. And it like it gets you out of the habit of going. And when like you just then you don't read the comics mm. that you used to read, and then you're behind on everything, and then you don't go. Uh, and, I like, find that in, in most cities there's like one comic shop yeah. where you're like, that's the one I go to. Mm -hmm. That's the one full of cool people. But yeah, like Do what I found was that um. There was a, you can't tell, like this guy was like, my comic shop is clean and bright and like everything is cool. And I was like, yeah, but like one of the shops where I was treated the worst consistently was like a self-proclaimed nerd mecca of like giant store mm. full of everything that nerds love, clean, shiny, bright, walk on in, everybody. And, just and they were terrible. Just because his comic store exists doesn't mean that that never yeah. happened to you. Yeah, and then like I walked into, because I was in South Carolina and I, there aren't a lot of comic book stores there and I walked into one to pick up my favorite comic and oh yeah, um, and it was dark and it was like a basement and all of the comics were in cardboard boxes just like everywhere and I was like, ooh, where's my comic? And the guy behind the counter, he like, you know, he had a neck beard and everything and I was like, oh no, this guy doesn't look that nice, but then he's like, hi, how are you? Can I help you find something? What are you looking for? Oh, you like that comic? I like that comic too. Have you thought about this one? That was kind of in the same like genre and like was super nice and all the other guys who were hanging out there at the comic store who also looked pretty intimidating to me they were all like oh yeah I love that comic you know they were like it was a lovely experience no, and I, I wouldn't have known I w if I were stereotyping I wouldn't have known so like you can't just say like my store is really clean and shiny mm. that means that everyone here is treated well because like that's not true and you can't always tell it just by looking <laughs> uh, does anyone have any questions out there I want to yes well right in the front there we go <laughs> I've always read humor, uh, and um, uh, it's like a puzzle. Um, I, I, I write gags in my mind, and I, and I sort of like tumble them around in there until the, all the like excess bits are, are, are gone, and then I'm like, there's the joke, okay. Um, but uh, uh, for me, it's kind of about um, getting a bit ahead of the audience, because people are going to read the comics really fast. If I'm trying to tell a joke, like I almost have to tell it before they get to the end. Um, and uh, and just really really paying attention to what you find funny, because uh, um, that's that's if you think it's funny, it is <laughs> for, pretty much. Um, and uh, um, I read a lot of humor. Um, do, do you guys have like go-to things, or you're like, ah, I forget how to be funny, and then you read your favorite like Jack Handy essay, and you're like, oh yeah, that's how to be funny. <laughs> is that that um, and uh, and just sort of keep up with, with um, not just comics, but like humor writers. I do anyway. But. Yeah, I think mostly I just convince myself that something is really, really funny, and then I just mm. run it into the ground until other people <laughs> at least start claiming or like making me feel better about the fact that it's funny. Uh, it's been really weird things over the years. Or sometimes they really are only accessible to me. I think there was one day where I just I found a bunch of pictures of ladies with giant hair with boats on the very top of the hair. Oh well, yeah, like, like Marie Antoinette. Like, yeah. Said, yeah. <laughs> so it was like boat hair, or I don't remember what, hair boat. I was just like, guys, I love hair boats. Send me all the pictures of hair boats that you can find. Yeah. It was like a thing. I don't know. Like it was like uh, our navy is doing well, and the, like the ladies' club would be like, welcome home, <laughs> <laughs> sailors. Hair boats. Hair boats. 
<laughs> I like Admiral Nelson's wife. Uh, he he like won something somewhere. And she she got like a dress covered in anchors. <laughs> like real anchors? No, just oh, like okay. a motif and like and it was all like fitted out with like weird like nautical stuff. He came home and she like burst out the door. <laughs> <laughs> <Best. laughs> <laughs> any, not, any other questions? Yeah. What do we got here? Oh, yeah? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, this was for Kate. Uh, I was wondering, um, since you do all these really great um, autobiographical comics and stuff, and kind of like all the fears of like, you talking to yourself as a kid, now, like you talking um, yeah. to your parents, um, how, how have like, your, um, your kind of like autobiographical comics evolved, and like what like inspired you to like Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. I do them whenever I go home because um, I, I love, the, the, I, I'm just, I miss, I'm homesick all the time. Um, and, uh, and when I come home and they're, they're, I'm like, if my sisters aren't there, we're like, dad said this, and like typing um, messages and stuff to each other. And, and I started just, just doodling what people were saying because it, it just, it made me laugh. And, and I, um, I didn't want to forget it because you know how you forget things almost instantly, the, these little small things. And now when I read stuff that I made in like 2010, and I would have forgotten it if I hadn't made those comics, it's really like special, very important to me. Um, so, so I almost do them now as almost a record of, of things uh, because I, I want to keep them for myself. Did your dad really wear those pants? They were like weird pajama pants. <laughs> <laughs> Any. Even even yesterday when we were at the um, Mount Vernon, like I was gonna, I like buying them souvenirs wherever I go because they never leave home. <laughs> They're like, get on a plane, no. <laughs> um, but I wanted to get him a T-shirt, but now he's got such a big belly. I don't know what size it is. It's like, <laughs> I have brought home stuff, and he like puts it on. It's all tight, or he oh. can't close it. And I'm like, oh no, I want to get him a t-shirt, but what if they're too, what if the, what if this XL shirt is too small? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so anyway, the pants were just like over. <laughs> over the track belly. Oh my god. <laughs> Very nice. A couple of questions over there. We've got a question in this, this section there. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, he's <laughs> waving. Uh, okay, hard, hard waving, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't have kids of my own, and I'm always trying to share independent comics with my friends' kids, who are all my friends. And Nimona was the first one that I could take, that I just fell in love with, and I could take to the young girls uh, that I want to share comics with. So thank you for that. But I have two problems now. One is explaining that they can't get a Nimona haircut right now. <laughs> uh, That's so cool. It is. It's really great. But moms... You know, at this age. Uh, and my other one is, is uh, we've burned through Lumberjanes, we've burned through Nimona. Uh, who else? What's next? What can I share with them next? First of all, you should definitely let them get their hair cut like that. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite phenomenons that's come out more from Lumberjanes than from Nimona, because uh, her hairstyle is pretty weird. Um, but it's little girls who read Lumberjanes and then they decide that they want an undercut. And so they get some scissors and they give themselves an undercut. And because they have awesome parents, they'll tweet it at me and then like and then I took her to the barbershop and got it fixed. And it's just a little girl's like there's one little girl who wanted a blue streak in her hair like Ripley and her parents let her do it for her birthday. And it was just like like, uh, when you're, like, my parents let me cut my hair short when I was like 15, and I, it's not that big a deal, but like in the South, it kind of is a little bit. Like, my grandmother's like, oh, your beautiful hair, no! <laughs> uh, and I was like, I felt awesome, because I had like made a decision about my hair, and then I felt great. Anyway, let kids do stupid things to their hair, because, you know, uh, they're kids. They'll, I like it. They'll grow. <laughs> Just because you were talking about parents, and I like that your, yours were mad to cut short. Mine are always like, cut your hair, cut it now, cut it all off. <laughs> I, went, I went to the hairdresser and I got, I got a trim, and then I came back, and my dad was like, did you get a haircut? And I was like, yes. And he said, was it a swipe and a miss? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I love I love the uh, the she, she, your your hair you, you draw like very iconic sort of hairstyles which is really cool I never uh, I've always noticed them but never put much thought into it and and it's it's like an awesome way for for young readers to to kind of like own that 
I saw two girls holding hands once in a, at a comic show when Hunger Games had came out, and they both had like these Katniss brains. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just walking around there like so confident. I'm like, oh, oh look at those little. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Smashing braids. I don't know, like, I'm a little bit face blind, so sometimes hair is the only way I can tell people oh. apart. <laughs> so I put, a, like, a lot of, um, I put a lot of thought into hairstyles. Nobody ever repeats a hairstyle mm -hmm. in the same comic. Um, but if you're, if you're looking for more uh, comics to give the girls... Um, yeah, that was the question, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, gosh. Uh, I haven't... I haven't read it yet, but Craig Thompson just came out with this giant book, Space Dumplings, and it's it's like a. Yeah, I haven't read it either. No, I don't know. I I. Um, Zeta. 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 Yeah, I was like, there's another one about a space girl too. Yeah, Zeta, space girl. That's there's um actually first second does have a, like dragons beware. Have mm. you seen that book? That one's really good. I like oh. that one too. If I have I have a uh, yeah Raina's smile and, and yeah. Baby yeah, Sears yeah, Club, yeah, yeah. and I I gave I gave my cousins one called Princeless. It's, oh it's yeah, a, yeah, it's she saves herself. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a bunch. There's actually a bunch out now. I want to ask, though, Noel, when I first, I was, it did say when you had signed Nimona with HarperCollins that it was a two-book deal. Yes. What does that mean? Um, I'm not doing a Nimona sequel. Uh, oh. They, yeah. Oh. I sold it to them as two books, and I was like, and they put it in the contract as a sequel, mm. and I thought maybe I would, and then I finished the book, and I just, I don't see how it can be done, because, like, Nimona, more than anything else, was so... The characters tied in so specifically to what the story was. So now it's just like, if I did a sequel, it would be taking the characters out of that context, and it's just like... I don't know, I really like leaving it open. Um, I have an idea, though. I have an idea about one very specific small part of Nimona that I want to bring back in an unexpected way. And no, I will not say anything more than that. But <laughs> I have three more books coming from HarperCollins, so <laughs> okay, so you it have was more books yeah, yeah, and then uh, yeah. and in case you hadn't heard, uh, Nimona was like on the long list for the National Book Award, which is just about as huge in the literary world as you can get. So let's yeah. like you know, yay. <laughs> Um, okay, we're running out of time. We have time for one more question. So, yeah, with the purple, purple. Hey, so, uh, Noel, you went to Micah, and I was wondering about, like, how you feel about this sort of, the, oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I was wondering how you felt about the sort of, like, the perceived difference in, like, necessity versus, of, like, of, like, the, the perceived necessity of going to, like, this big name art school to be successful versus, like, actually getting your art out there and, like, being out there in the art world and the community and how you felt about that, like, which you feel was more important to you in, yeah. like, getting your stuff out there. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. always been a really hard question for me um, because art school taught me a lot. I came from a, a town that didn't have a lot of art a culture or art. Like, I didn't take any classes growing up, really. Um, and so art school like just showed me a bigger world um, and that was really important. I also graduated ridiculously in debt and I am still like paying off, like I have so much more to pay off. Like it makes me sad every time I look at it and I'm like when will I ever pay this off? I don't know. It feels like it's not even going down. It feels like it's going up <laughs> with like the amount of interest. interest that they have mm -hmm. on these loans. Like, it is so much money. And like, if you don't have parents who will pay for that, then like, you have to really think about like, what you're gonna get out of it. Yeah. I think it needs to be taken very seriously. Um, and, but like, the truth is that I can't imagine another world where I didn't go to art school. I don't know what would have happened. I would hope that I would have still been driven enough to learn those things on my own, but I don't know. Um, I do think that if you are in art school, you, have to try and learn every single thing you can and take advantage of every single tool that they are, offer you. Um, and sometimes you have to do things despite the school instead of because of it. You can get A's in every class and it doesn't mean that you're gonna graduate and like be good at life. <laughs> yeah. So like, like sometimes you know better, you know best what's, what's best for you and like of course always learn everything you can from your teachers even if you know, their field is something that's pretty different from what you want to do. You can still learn from them. Um, and just if you're there, like, take, take full advantage of that and then take that and run off in, in your direction. And uh, the school should, should support you. If they don't, then do it anyway. Because that's what art is about, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, I think, unfortunately, 
we got to wrap this up. So it's very sad. Please go see Kate Beaton, Noel Stevenson.